let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Regaining thy brother, an everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, St. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Second lesson, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Golden text, Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Quote, the world is not ready. My dear brethren, to the children of God, the word of God should be very interesting. Yet, to both Christians, some letters of the word of God appear to binding to be interesting at all. The reason is not that there is any gospel that is not given in our own interest for our happiness, joy, and eternal life. Rather, the Gospels concerning the temptations we can avoid more easily gain our approval as more interesting than those which require more restraint and zeal. This shows that the world is not ready to sacrifice enough for what is important and this is their failure. To live peacefully, we must practice the gospel. We ought, therefore, to be interested in our brethren to the extent that we must bring them from darkness to life, from hatred to love. To do this successfully, we must be careful not to be overtaken by the very fault from which we are trying to save them from. Let us be practical Christians. We must use the all-conquering spiritual qualities of meekness, love, and patience. When a brother offends us, we should not revenge pull a long face or sue him to court. We should not scold or report our brother to people of darkness, to people or discuss the case with someone else. We should not scandalize him. Our duty as Christians is to call our brother gently and in secret. Show him his fault. Show him his offense against us. This gospel does not advise you to condone evil or nurse any grievance against your brother in silence. Do not say everything is well when actually you are boiling within with the urge to be outspoken, pointing out your brother's mistakes and correcting them. Use restraint and judiciousness in doing so immediately. You should know that if you purposely fail to do that, which you know to be good, 
it becomes a sin to you? When some people fail, they put up pretense that they were trying to do good. He who abuses an offender is not doing good. If you blame an offender or fight against him, you are not doing good. Read the first lesson again. First lesson. First lesson, St. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. From the above text, we should note that the settlement should be between our brother and us only. We should not shout at him or refer to the little help we used to render to him in the past. Do not disgrace an offender, else he has the right to call you a sinner. There are many reasons why we should not keep quiet when we see our brother hardening in crime. The offender may be engaged in worse crimes that may lead to his death, whereas our word of advice could have arrested the situation. By our silence, we have encouraged others to continue in sin. We poison our minds by harboring people's offenses against us. The worst is that we cannot suppress the temptation to express our feelings. If we cannot do it the right way, we may do it the wrong way by calling our children thieves and beating them up unnecessarily. Praying in silence against an offender, wishing him evil, scandalizing him so much that at last we have to tell him his fault in public before witnesses instead of in secret. This is a worse crime against us. All these happen because we prolong our anger by not telling our brother in time of his fault with a view to regaining him. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Bear no grudge. Whosoever allows the sun to go down upon his anger commits sin. If your brother offends you in the market, do not keep the anger till you arrive home. Otherwise you have allowed the sun to go down upon your wrath. If you are angry, do not be a grudge. After showing your brother his fault, take him as before. Do not go back to remember the offense or discuss it with anybody. If you do this, you cannot do any good to anybody as a Christian because anybody who harbors past offenses harbors in his heart Satan, the author of evil. Can you imagine anybody who can do any good thing in annoyance? So, in order, to, in order to do good and gain your brother, you must eschew annoyance. Tell your brother his sin secretly between you and him and pardon all wrongs against you wholeheartedly. There is nothing that pleases God as reinstating an offender in our love. If you correct and bring back to the right, he that has gone wrong, the Lord 
will forgive you your own sins. Let's read the golden text again. Golden text. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Conversion of sinners, a great work. This is to further emphasize that there is no work of God greater than the conversion of sinners. There is no profit in you are going to preach to a good Christian. Go rather to the lost sheep. Go to the thieves, the murderers, the necromancers, the fornicators and the adulterers. In doing this, we must be careful to use meekness and all other good qualities of the spirit with which every good Christian is supposed to abound. No man brings a madman to order, but he must first avoid provoking him. If you threaten a man with a stick or a machete, he may cut off your head in self-defense. Use love, patience, and meekness, not hatred, grudge, slander, or bully to correct an offender. Christ used the Holy Spirit to drive away evil spirits. There is no sinner, however hardened, that cannot thus be converted. The instrument of conversion. It is useless insulting a sinner who is immune to being hushed. It is useless hushing a sinner who is immune to being hushed. Beating up a sinner cannot change him because beating up people is his work. If you keep silent, he can do that even better. But the instrument of conversion is what the sinner lacks. And you must give him love, patience, and meekness. Our Lord Jesus Christ used these instruments. The brotherhood of the cross and star is also being is also using the same instruments. Do not rejoice over vision and prophecy, but rejoice if you can convert sinners. For if you want to gain your husband or wife, friend or brother, you must use these spiritual instruments. You must practice this gospel. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.